Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. This is Jason Newland, and I am doing a recording, and it's going to be a sleep hypnosis weekly recording. I'm a couple of days late, which is uh, sometimes not a sentence that people like to hear, but in this situation, I think it's okay. So I'm going to record this both as a, not just me talking, but also I'm going to be adding music to it separately. So there's going to be two versions of this recording. The one with music will be a bit longer. So I hope you're well. I just want to thank everyone for joining me. All of those people that uh, listen regularly, thank you. Thank you for your support. And I hope you're well. I hope you're all doing okay in the world as it is. So I want to get on with it now. I think, did I say only listen when you can safely... Only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I get tired when I do these. It's, you know, when you press the play button on my recordings and perhaps you naturally already start to feel relaxed and perhaps a bit tired just by the action of pressing the play button. And it may even seem like a bit of a chore to lie down on your bed because... You just want to go to sleep. Not because you want to do anything. You just you need to just lie down and allow it to happen naturally because you know that that's the only way that sleep actually happens. It's a natural occurrence. And then you hear my probably not such an exciting voice. And it's almost like a little signal through your ears, moving down your spinal cord to all the different parts of your body, traveling along like a little messenger, you know, a little horse saying, you know, handing over a piece of paper, a little letter, and just says, you can relax now, you can let go. You can fall asleep if you like, but it doesn't matter, just relax. There's nothing to do, nothing to say, no one to say it to. There's nothing. It's just you with your eyes closed lying down on a bed. Or, of course, if you're in a different situation, you may be like sitting up in a bed or sitting in a comfortable, supported chair. But for the majority of people, probably maybe lying down on a bed whatever your chosen way to enjoy a nice, comfortable, safe sleep. And those little messengers traveling all through your body, those tiny little horses, <laughs> very small. Obviously, if they've got to get through your blood system, you know, get through your lymphatic system to all the different parts, allowing every part, even things like your toenails or the hairs on your toes or, you know, the bit of skin, the skin underneath your foot, on the heel of your foot, even those bits can just start to relax. Those parts that maybe you possibly don't give huge amounts of attention to on an average day can actually start to appreciate a bit of a spotlight on them allowing them to just relax let go without any conceived 
or even any thoughts really about what should happen or what could happen or what you'd like to happen. Because obviously if you're listening to this, you're looking to relax deeply and fall asleep. And that just comes naturally, effortlessly, completely free of any thought or action other than just pressing the play button and just lying down on your bed. Or if you're listening to this before going to bed and you start to look forward to the time when you can actually lie down on your bed, relaxing your whole body automatically, letting go of any thoughts from the past, the future, or for, even from now, because there's nothing to think about. There's nothing, no thing at all that needs your brain's attention other than just sending those signals of sleepiness around your body, allowing and letting each part of your body know that it's it's okay it's okay to just let go completely because there's nothing required from you there's nothing needed for you to do because you can Completely relax in a way that just feels right. And I think the reason it feels very natural is because that's exactly what it is. Feeling sleepy is as natural as feeling hungry. Or needing to go to the toilet. All those things that we are born with that natural, I guess you could call it notification. You know, our body and our mind working together our brain may be telling our mind it's time to go to sleep or it's time to go to the toilet, it's time to eat. We were born with that. We were born with the ability to feel the difference between hot and cold. So we have that inbuilt already. We're born to feel pressure. So pressure on our skin. We can feel that from a very, very early age, from birth. Which is why a baby cries when it's smacked on the bum. We know how to cry. We know how to sleep. The sleeping is it's one of those things that we do the most of when we're a baby. I know that some babies you might think, oh, all they do is cry. But you probably find that they sleep more than they cry, even the ones that cry a little bit too much, possibly. They sleep and can fall asleep. It's beautiful to watch. 
a little kid, not even just babies, but even you know, a toddler, a small child, fall asleep while they're eating. It's not ideal to do that um, as an adult or, you know, but it's funny to watch someone, a little child maybe even older, an older child, maybe five, six, seven, eight, even ten, force themselves to stay awake because they don't want to miss what's going on. So perhaps they're sitting there watching television. I don't want to go to bed yet. Don't, I'm not tired. I'm not tired. And you can see that their body is practically crumpling over with tiredness. And they're doing everything they can to try and stay awake. Trying to force themselves to stay awake. And the opposite happens. The complete opposite happens. And for whatever reason, that's the way our brains seem to operate. Is when we try to force something that's natural. It seems to work the opposite. Try to force yourself to feel relaxed. I mean, actually forcing yourself. Because when we force ourselves to do something, there's a lot of... Uh, I'm not sure you could call it cheerleading inside your brain, inside your mind. There's a pretty lot of negative talk. A lot of put down. A lot of... Uh, yeah, un healthy chit chat inside your own brain calling yourself names maybe for not being able to accomplish the thing that you're trying to do I want to be relaxed I want to be relaxed why can't I be relaxed oh and it's, it's not going to happen that way it can't happen that way it's the opposite It's like laying in a bar full of water and commanding yourself to be dry. I want to be dry. I want to be dry. It's just not going to, it's not going to happen. Or laying on the floor in your bedroom. I want to be covered in water. I want it. Well, it's not going to happen. You can demand it, you can command it, you can convince yourself that it's going to happen, but it won't. Unless you get into the bath, then you can be covered in water safely. So we can't command ourselves to fall asleep. And there's something about giving up that need to control. Which is something that perhaps we've learned as children from adults that we're controlling. And all adults are controlling to a certain degree. Because I suppose there's that, there's that responsibility. They have to sort of be the one in control. But we don't have to be controlling to ourselves. We can be gentle with ourselves. But I don't have children. And maybe some people listening to this don't either. A lot of people do. Maybe people have got grandchildren. So in this situation where you've got a child, whether it's your godchild, grandchild, child, or just 
um, a friend's child or whoever, or just an imaginary child in your mind, just imagine in a such you know scenario such as this, and the child was in bed, but you know it's time to go to sleep. Maybe you've read the child a storybook. And maybe it's an old, you know, fairy tale. I think that would be nice for the child to set the child into a nice, a nice, comfortable, happy sleep. Tell a tale of witches and dragons and, you know, <laughs> wolves eating grandmothers and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that would that'll be a nice... Nice pleasant story for a young child. And, but they're not sleepy, you know, if you read them the story, but they're not going to sleep. So you think, I know what I'll do. I'll shout at them. Go to sleep. Bloody go to sleep. Go to sleep now. Get to sleep. You've got to go to sleep. Now it seems ridiculous. I I guess there's some people. Hopefully they're not listening, or if they are listening, to think that's the right thing to do is get some help. But it's not going to work on a small child. And it's laughable, the idea that anyone would do it. I can see why someone could be annoyed enough to do it, but that's a different thing, that's a parental thing. But you wouldn't do it, shout at a child to go to sleep. Because you know it's not going to work. You may think it works, you might close the door and think, yeah, it works because uh, I don't hear them anymore. They've not gone to sleep straight away. In fact, it's probably taken them a lot longer to go to sleep than it would have done if you hadn't shouted at them. And the real reason for mentioning this is, would you shout at yourself? Would you have a go at yourself in your mind? Could you imagine if we actually verbalised the things that we say to ourselves? Lying down in bed, but actually verbally shouting out, Go go to sleep, you should go to sleep. We've got to get up in the morning. Go go to sleep. Go to sleep now. Go to sleep now. It's not not useful. In fact, if anything, it's unkind towards yourself. Which again is the opposite to what all of my recordings are about. It's about being kind to yourself. Everything I do, I do for you. Everything I do is with the underlying underlying context or the structure or maybe the foundations that holds these recordings up is the message of being kind to yourself. To give yourself a bit of a break, you know. To maybe start noticing the qualities that you like about yourself. To realise that you deserve to be happy. But to realise it, not just hearing it and nodding, but to actually realise that, you know, you've actually realistically helped a lot of people over the years. Even people that you don't even know that you've helped them. You just have. Maybe you said the right thing at the right time. Maybe you just held a door open for someone in a supermarket and that actually changed their perception or changed their mind in that moment, which changed what they were going to do next and therefore transformed their life and they may not even be aware of it. 
So, the idea of actually, it's not just about stopping being cruel to yourself, stopping being uh, negative and rude inside your own mind, having a go at yourself because, um, you know, you're trying to force yourself to, to sleep or relax. Perhaps the idea of letting go of all that stuff and embracing the fact that you deserve to feel relaxed and calm. Embracing the fact that you can actually enjoy your own mind. You can allow you can allow those feelings of pleasure to arise which are connected to sleeping, to relaxing, to letting go. That is a nice feeling. When you realize that when you stop trying to force relaxation and sleep, just happens naturally. In fact, it also works the other way. You try and force yourself to stay awake. You won't be able to. You won't be able to. And you won't even know that you've fallen asleep. That's one of the weird things about sleep is it's not always a signal, is there? It's not always an actual... Um, you know, like you get into an elevator or a lift and you you press, you're at the top floor and you press the, the number one to go down to the, the first floor from 10. And as you go down, nine, eight, seven... Six, five, four, three, two, one. And then the doors open and you, you feel you're closer or maybe at that level where you can be asleep, where you can feel so relaxed and so, so tired that there is nowhere else to go. You can just enjoy being there. Now with sleeping, because it's a gradual process and we can start to notice when we're drifting. So for example, you get into the elevator and you're gonna go down from uh, one down to minus one, which takes you even deeper into a sense of relaxation and calmness. And you may notice that as that goes down, you start to drift. Of each number you start to drift a little bit and although you can hear my voice it's not as relevant as it might have been let's say 10 15 minutes ago 20 minutes ago 25 minutes ago when I started the recording it's now become it's there but there's a, there's probably already a sense of drifting happening anyway. But as we go from one all the way down to minus one in that lift, that elevator, there's a slowing down. And I'm not really sure why, but 
I mean, it feels nice. So it's a comfortable feeling. And your body seems to kind of fade away. So that it's no longer about physical feelings as much as just letting go and going with that natural energy. So the drifting sort of happens and so what we'll do is we'll, we'll press that minus one button in the elevator and that lift and we'll just go from one down to minus one and just notice what happens as I count down. Notice how you may drift in between hearing my voice say the numbers. Now, starting going down, first of all to zero, which I guess that would be the basement. But now it's going down again. Minus one. So you've gone down to minus one. It's only a small drop. Imagine going down to minus ten. Minus ten, even deeper in your mind. Noticing that maybe even though you can hear me, there's less interested, you're less interested in the words I'm saying. As you focus. seem less important as you press that minus 10 button moving down from minus 1 down to minus 10 in that elevator lift and noticing how you how you may drift in between each number as you go further down here in the numbers further down minus two Minus three. Four.
minus minus
Nein. 